So uh, I'm a data scientist at the Ground Force. Uh, we have a lab called the Big Data, LT and the AI lab. In, it includes uh, almost uh, all the trendy password in the industry. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, pumping machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence uh, into uh, Ground Force business. Why pumping? Because Ground Force is actually a pump manufacturing company. And this is what we do. And uh, of course, we would like to get uh, new stuff, like uh, data stuff, and the machine learning and uh, deep learning and uh, artificial intelligence into our future product. So here's the storyline, very simple. So first, uh, I, will, I will give you a very, very quick introduction on why actually it make, makes sense for a company like uh, Groundforce uh, to become uh, data-driven. And then I will take uh, one of the examples uh, uh, we are doing at the moment uh, to, give, uh, to uh, provide a little bit of deep dive on, the, uh, on what we do and what results do we achieve at the moment. And I will close up the talk with uh, how do we envision ourselves in the near future and what do, where do we want to go. So. This is uh, uh, one uh, slide uh, information for Groundforce. Groundforce is a pump manufacturing company. If my number is not wrong, actually Groundforce is the number one pump manufacturer in the whole world. It has been uh, 73 years old. It is founded in Denmark. And it has, now has uh, 83 companies uh, across the uh, world. Right now, we have uh, the uh, capacity to produce about 16 million units uh, uh, pumps every year, and we have 19,000 employees worldwide. Last year, the turnover is about 3.4 billion euro. And this is one of the typical uh, products probably you is in your home, but uh, you really never really rea realize that there are actually grown for the products inside your your home. Please check in you know, the technical room back home. Maybe you will see the ground force pump. Uh, similar as uh, many other Danish companies, uh, it is still one, one owner, and it is uh, 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 owned by the Purdue family. <coughs> uh, for ground force, uh, when we when uh, it is designing its strategy for 2020, actually the digital element is uh, playing a very important role. Uh, we identified the uh, four lighthouses uh, for us to uh, going forward. The first one is actually we want to do more direct, real-time, and relevant relationships uh, to our customers. And we believe this is uh, going to deliver much more value to our customer and get instantaneous uh, feedback from them so that we can do much better next time. We also want to introduce more connectivity and uh, optimization in our products so that in the future, the pump is also become a connected pump. Uh, because of all these new demands, we also need the new business, business models so that to help us uh, to create value for our ground force. And also we would like to build a robust digital value chain so that to, to ensure all the products we are building now can continuous, uh, continuously de uh, delivering value to the ground force business. And we also identified uh, 10 master do initiatives. One of the uh, key one key, uh, is to improve our data analytics and action and ability significantly. So guided by this uh, Lighthouses, and uh, one of the initi uh, initiatives that we are trying to do is actually to do a data-driven customer engagement via digital touch points. So here, I mainly, uh, in this study, we mainly focus on the website data, so mean, uh, which means that when our users uh, landing on our Groundforce uh, uh, web page, and then we start to, we want to do something, okay? Uh, we identified the two key uh, successes. So the first one is uh, actually we really want to learn uh, some, inf some information from our customers. So who they are, not uh, by name, but by some attributes where we can actually 
uh, provide something useful to them. The second uh, uh, success uh, in our uh, initiative is actually can we improve the customer experience given that we can have more information on them. So we followed the good old <laughs> strategy where we first do a POC, try to see whether things will work or not. And the goal of the POC is very simple. We really want to learn the customer job roles. Why job roles is important here, and I will cover it in a few minutes. And uh, given once, if we can show some success uh, in the POC stage, then we can move to the MVP stage, where we want to deli uh, deliver a minimum uh, variable product for our customer. And the goal is to personalize the user experience based on what we know from them. So now I will uh, dive a little bit deeper into what we uh, have done on the POC stage. The goal is to learn the customer job roles. So this is uh, bringing the big question. And uh, I believe that, uh, mm, and I think also many businesses believe that when they know more about the, their customers, and they perhaps can do much better than they do at the moment, in a good way. And this is also uh, the intention we have, and we don't want to bother the customer when it is not needed. But we want to create a nice experience to them when they are visiting our, our website. So then, uh, as I mentioned before, we want to learn the job roles. Why it is so relevant here in, in, in Grownfo's context? It's because actually Grownfo's customers, they have some uh, unique uh, properties. They are professional users, they can be specialists, and they can be experts in their own domain. So these people, they, have, uh, uh, they know what they are doing. They know what information they want to get out from the data. They know what uh, pages they want to, to find in the website. So these are the, some of the typical um, profiles for the customers. For example, they can be operation manager, they can be facility manager. They can also be consulting engineer, they can be installer, and they can, they can be distributors. So they have, uh, they have a quite a diverse universe, and they also have their own attributes. So now we know that you know, we want to uh, uh, learn more about uh, our job roles, and what's the problem? So as a data scientist, we are so engaged, because now we finally know, you know what do we want to do. Then let's why don't we just start to do it? The problem is actually we only know quite a few percentage of, of our job, uh, of our users. In fact, we only know less than 5% at the moment. Imagine that the, the, this is the universe uh, of the ground force un, uh, customers. And the colored figures shows that some people, by some means, we know uh, their job roles already. Either they have told us, uh, when they are logging on our website or through some other channels, we can access their job role information. But they account only a very few portion. What we want to do is actually we want to achieve in the end where we know more or less all the visitors from our website with uh, very good confidence. And here is the, in the middle is where the machine learning and the deep learning method comes into play. We want to see what you know, the known, uh, known users do and uh, whether can we extract uh, some useful inf information from their visits so that uh, we can predict the users from the next visit. But no, we have uh, other challenges as well. Uh, one of the key challenges for uh, for uh, click stream data is that they can be really, really messy, okay? Uh, in data science, we always say that garbage in, garbage out. Your model can only be as good as your data. So we need the good data. Why it can be so challenging to deal with, this, uh, uh, deal with the website data is because, first of all, the website that they may build on different platforms in the history 
So 10 years ago, and we think this platform is good, and we build all our stuff on top of that. And as time evolves, and we, something better comes up. Okay, so we migrate, and we do something, and we continually, uh, continuously uh, adapting to the new technology. And the second factor is actually the web structure and the UX design is constantly changing. So today you are visiting uh, the website, and tomorrow it may, may have a different design, because they believe that, you know, better design attracts to customers. And they want to create this uh, uh, nice feeling for the customer so that uh, their eyes don't hurt. Another uh, factor is uh, the content of the web is ever increasing, right? So we have uh, uh, very professional users, and they have a huge demand on knowledge, right? So we need to, uh, we need to bring what they want. And this content uh, is adding up every day. The training materials are adding up every day. And there's so many things we can, uh, we can add, up, uh, add to the website. And also the data collection technology and the tools, they may change over time. This creates a lot of inconsistency between uh, when you are dealing with the data. Because uh, three years ago, the data was handled in a different way compared to today. So that you, know, you need to, to find a coherent story to uh, to use the data. Here is uh, one peek into the challenge. <laughs> Actually, in, uh, in website data, one of the, uh, many of the attributes, they are categorical. And dealing with the categorical, sometimes it's actually not as easy as dealing uh, with numerical values. Now let's just do a simple example on, <laughs> on this and try to give you, give you a bit of feeling why you know, categorical variables sometimes can go wrong. So I'm going to ask a simple question. <clears throat> so how many of the audience are actually from Sweden? Quite a lot, yes. How many are actually from Denmark? Some, yes. What about Norway? Some, yes. OK, so do you see, if I finish my question now, do you see some problems? Yes, because I didn't. When I collect data, I only on purposely choose three of the countries I just mentioned. Why don't I mention Finland? Why don't I mention China? Why don't I mention India? Okay? So this creates some kind of uncertainties to the data. Okay? So when the data is collected in the right way, you know what, what they are. But if the, those data is not collected in the right way, how do you guess okay, what is the right way? And some, some people may even uh, can say, okay, I, I'm silent, so I don't, uh, I don't really you know, want to tell anything about this, okay? But how do you figure out? So this is a really, really big challenge to deal with uh, uh, categorical data. And how do we solve this problem? Me, as a data scientist, sit there, sit there and uh, feeling hopeless. And the business domain, they know, ah, you know, we should use our data on something. And, you know, we, we, we believe that, you know, this uh, can really deliver value to our, to our customers. But we have those uh, challenges. So I sit together with the business domain, knowledge experts, literally sit together and to study the data. Okay. So why these features is uh, logged in so many different ways? Why, this, uh, uh, why there are so many mis missing values which, didn't, uh, uh, which shouldn't appear, but appears? Why the order of a visit uh, you know, in, the, in the data is not in the, uh, in, in the right way, etc. So we discuss and we find out the solution. In the end, we want to achieve ac accurate and robust features for our machine learning or deep learning algorithm. So on this process, as you probably can see, to dealing with all the challenges, we spend quite a lot of time on the data collection, feature engineering. Okay. Once the data is prepared in nice and shiny format, and we can go to the 70 per, uh, 20% where we can do our fun stuff, deep learning, right, trendy, catchy, and also machine learning. And actually, uh, I also heard that some people, this rules doesn't really apply to their problem. I'm really happy for that, because I think this shouldn't be. But this is a hard reality for many of the problems. 
and hopefully, hopefully we can turn this around in the future. So this is one of the reference uh, solution architecture where we built actually how to handle this uh, uh, website data. We have a job role database sitting somewhere uh, within Groundforce, and we have the daily uh, web logs coming from, the, from our website. And these data, they are landed uh, in somewhere uh, on the database where we first look up, okay, have uh, anybody told us that, you know, who they are yet? If they do, then we let them let this kind of data go to the training data pipeline. If they don't, then we, are trying, we will try to predict a job role. And then the training data, of course, is still messy and uh, similar for the to be predicted data. And then we need to do the ETL part so that to prepare the data in a nice way. When the data is ready, and we can do the model training and the retraining, and uh, when it is uh, retrained, and we will push it to the production environment where the uh, prediction model can always uh, keep up to date. So for the to, to be predicted data, we also you know, do the data cleaning. And also because uh, there are, when we're dealing with the training and the, uh, training and the uh, prediction data, and there are some kind of, uh, mm, some features actually encoded in a way that it has to be uh, the prediction data has to conform with the training data. So that's why we have this uh, link between the two ETLs so that they, they can share some features. When the, when the result is ready, and uh, we push it to the, to the website. Of course, we need to be very confident, confident that uh, you know, the data can, uh, about the user job role. Uh, on this project, we have uh, used uh, many components, and mainly we, de uh, we develop our work on the Azure Cloud. Uh, we use the Azure Blob Storage and the SQL Server to uh, store our data, and the data analytics uh, to uh, uh, transform some of the data, and use the uh, uh, Azure Data Factory to build the whole pipeline so that they can do some monitoring on, the, uh, on different steps. We also use the Azure Databricks and the Spark in order to leverage the uh, parallel computation power. And uh, we use uh, Python and the Machine Learning Studio, et cetera, in order to, uh, to prepare the APIs for the, for the user to call. Uh, on that corner, you can see some of the results we have uh, at the moment. And we compared the, some of the, co uh, the conventional uh, machine learning methods and currently, the random forest is actually the leading horse, and it can achieve as uh, uh, accuracy can be as high as 90% at the moment. Uh, in fact, uh, if I look in, uh, back, the web log data can easily fit into the uh, deep learning fr framework. You can treat the visit, per visit information as a snap of the picture, snapshot, okay? Then you can invoke your uh, CN and uh, other methods uh, to do the inference uh, of the job role based on this. So from our results, and uh, we feel very excited, and we say, OK, you know, so many users uh, which we don't know, but now we know with great confidence. And then we are ready actually to move to the second stage. We want to bring this into production. Okay? We want to personalize the, the customer experience uh, based on what we know. So this is uh, what do we want to achieve. For example, if we know the uh, user is, from, is a consulting engineer, then uh, from Groundforce content, we actually have the engineering hub. So there are tons of relevant information for the consulting engineers, which might not be relevant to installers or other kind of job roles. And for installers, we also have the installer hub. Okay, so this information is more targeted to, to the people who is uh, uh, more of that kind of job type. And we also have uh, the training platform called the Academy, where perhaps a consulting engineer and some other uh, managers they would like to know a bit more about how the basic principles of pump and some. Uh, uh, knowledge on you know, how to set up the ground force pumps and uh, how to do uh, this and that with the pump. And then they can follow the training here. 
So this is uh, the whole solution uh, we, we implement. So when the user is landed at Grownfall's website, uh, we tra keep track of their, uh, their behaviors. And this data is uh, uh, sent to the data, uh, Azure data stor storage. And from where we can do the machine learning and deep learning. Then we can predict the, predict the job role. And we, we can score the confidence of the, uh, how, how confident we are uh, on the job role. And we can put the uh, data back in the storage somewhere for monitoring, for keep tracking of the model performance, and, to, and for uh, debugging. And then we can you know, push the uh, job role information to the user experience engine, where they can decide how, what kind of content they should offer to the customer. And this uh, cycle goes on and on and on, and we improve, uh, we improve the uh, algorithm as we know more and more customers. So looking forward to the future, and what we really want to do in the future is actually we want to uh, do more on the adaptive user engagement part. Okay? So right now, actually, our solution is based on you know, their previous visit information, meaning that for some people, if we don't know their job role, basically the first time they visit us, we have no clue who they are. Okay? Then we don't do anything. But once they have been visiting us, and then we can uh, score them using the machine learning and the deep learning algorithm, and then next time when they visit us, and then we know, okay? And then we can uh, offer personalizations uh, based on how confident uh, we are to, them, uh, to the customer. But this is also, you can see that there's also a delay in this uh, um, perspective. In the future, what we really want to do is that uh, to do more real time, to more, uh, when they are interacting with uh, uh, our website uh, on that session, can we do something to them? And one of the framework we are thinking to apply is actually by using the reinforcement learning framework. Some key takeaways. Uh, currently, there are um, many data science and uh, machine learning projects starting up in Grownforce. And uh, uh, from uh, top to bottom, actually, we, be we believe that uh, data science and machine learning, they indeed can provide a lot of value to our business. And second takeaway is that it's important that you have a good team, and it's important that you have the diversity in the team, and so that the people can focus on their specialty. Okay? Instead of one hero take everything. So you can create some synergies, and you can speed up the development process. You can save a lot of uh, uh, communication overhead. The last one is to try to get your managers on board. Okay? If they don't support you, then you will have a hard time. Because data science project can be complicated. There are infrastructure inv involved, there are people involved, there are money involved, so you need a green light. So try to bring your managers on board. But I couldn't get this on board. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so that's all what I want to say for uh, for the talk, and uh, you're welcome to ask questions. <laughs>